this is Fred Wester. I'm just about to enter stage on the Paradox GDC 2014 press conference where we have a great announcement for you guys. So we'll just get this started off right away. Without further ado, Frederick Wester, CEO of Paradox Interactive. Woo. Thank you. Again, thank you so much for coming. It's great to see so many familiar faces and friends here in the audience. And uh, I would like to start by saying that 2013 was a great year for Paradox Interactive, and we grew 35% of revenue. We released the fastest selling game we've ever produced, which is Europa Universalis 4. Uh, and we also released a few Steam Early Access games like War of the Vikings and Magic of Wizard Wars. Uh, at last month's Paradox Convention in Miami, we announced two new games from the internal studios. Runemaster and Hearts of Iron 4, and a couple of, of uh, expansions for Crusader Kings 2 and Europa Universalis 4 as well. We're not only expanding the games, we're also expanding as a company. Uh, we just formed a new studio in the north of Sweden. We're building a new team that is going to focus on some new exciting gameplay. And uh, we're expanding into new platforms as well, and we're having a new mobile studio built up internally as well. We are also partnering up with some awesome world-class developers going forward. And uh, that brings us why we're actually here today. Our big news today is that we're partnering with uh, Obsidian Entertainment to bring, first of all, Pillars of Eternity to market later on this year. We are looking at this as hopefully being a long-term relationship uh, since we share a lot of vision together with the Obsidian guys. And uh, as you know, their pedigree is unmatched in this industry. If you take games like Neverwinter Nights 2, Knights of the Old Republic 2, and Game of the Year 2014, South Park, The Stick of Truth, I am sure you agree with me on that statement. And therefore, I would like to welcome the CEO of Obsidian Entertainment, Fergus, up on stage to tell you more about how this all started and how the relationship is going to um, start from here. Welcome, Fergus. All righty. Thank you very much, Fred. Uh, so thank you all. Um, and uh, so yes, Pillars of Eternity, working with Paradox. Uh, it's pretty amazing. Uh, you know, we've, uh, you know, loved Paradox Games for years and years and have always been really impressed with what they do and how they care about what they do. And so, uh, you know, and so one of the things we wanted that we also are very, very thankful for is the, is our backers and for, and on Kickstarter. Because a lot of what, we couldn't have done what we, we couldn't have done what we wanted with Pillars of Eternity without Kickstarter and without our backers. And it, it's, it's something that's really a, uh, you know, as Fred was saying, it's sort of, we're the, one of the, you know, we're the RPG guys, we love RPGs, we've been making RPGs for years and years, and we never thought we could kind of go back in time and make the games that we got to make at uh, Black Owl Studios, like Baldur's Gate with Bioware, and internally making Icewind Dale, uh, and Planescape Torment, and the Fallouts. And you know, and I actually have to, you know, I have to thank uh, John at Game Banshee for bugging me at a, at a E3 a number of years ago and asking, well, why are those games? Why are there no more of those games? And I really didn't have a great answer for him, other than uh, p publishers at the time and still now, in a lot of ways, they look at $500,000 games and they look at $100 million games. That's exaggeration a little bit, but still, uh, you know, and that something like Pillars of Eternity just falls right back in a no man's land. And so we were like, how else we could make this? And then, of course, Double Fine with Kickstarter and In Exile with Kickstarter. And it was like, well, we could do this. And if we can, and we can interest people, like, wow, we have these awesome people at the studio, like Tim Kaine, who was one of the fathers of Fallout, and Josh Sawyer, who was the project director on Fallout New Vegas, and of course, Chris Avalon, the lead designer on Torment and, and Star Wars Knights of the Republic. So, you know, let's go do this. Let's, and thankfully, People agreed with us. People thought it was something awesome that we could do uh, and backed us and backed us amazingly. Uh, and so, you know, it just was an incredible thing to be able to do and, and get the sort of the just validation for what we want to do and the games that we want to make uh, through Kickstarter. So what role does Paradox play in all of this? 
for us, it's very important to stress that it's Obsidian's project uh, remains in creative control. It's your IP, and we're just happy to work with Obsidian on this great project. We're going to focus on the marketing, distribution, and the Kickstarter fulfillment parts. So someone has to send out these t-shirts, right? Marcos. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, it's also important to remember that we have a lot of, of Obsidian fans in the Paradox office as well. At least 10 people at Paradox uh, back this project from the beginning. <laughs> so yeah, so I, I, I think the thing is, you know, we want to make sure that everybody understands about Pillars of Eternity and this is and about kind of where the money that's going from the backing. And, and I think this really goes back to, you know, how Paradox treats games and how they, they want developers to succeed and they want developers to make awesome games and they want developers to kind of own what they're making. Uh, and so, you know, for us, like, you know, one of the things we're trying to say from Obsidian is like, we've gotten almost about four and a half million, if not more, uh, in backing dollars from people so far, and we, you know, some comes, still some comes in every day, uh, and we want everybody to totally understand that every dollar uh, that we get from everybody, it is going into the game, uh, because you know what's been very important to us ever since we did the Kickstarter is we made a lot of promises, as I'm sure you all know, a lot of Kickstarters make a lot of promises, and so what we're able to do. You know, we are really sure that we're, with the money that we have, we're going to be able, we're going to fulfill every one of those pro promises. So all the strongholds and the cities and the spells and the, the classes and the and the T-shirts, of course, um, all of those are getting done. And and the most important thing is what I wanted to come up here and say as well, um, because there's the occasional thing of like Kickstarters never ship and and things like that. Um, we're absolutely going to ship this year. Um, we're 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 doing really well. We're making great content, and they, and and I'm I'm actually amazed every day uh, at what the team has been able to do, uh, and and in the kind of the, the content that they're able to make. And so you know we're very like I said we're we're sure we're going to make it this year, uh, and we're really excited uh, to have everybody play it later. Great, thank you, Fergus. So good to have you here. Uh, now we move over to some questions, if you have any. Come on, otherwise I'll ask you questions, and <laughs> oh, we'll just do an internal Q&A here on stage. <laughs> Anything? Greg? Um, when, in <laughs> <laughs> when in 2014 we can, ask, can we, we expect we, we can ask you questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when in, t when in 2014 can we expect this game? For you, Steve? Um, it, it's going to ship. I mean, it's not going to ship like in in the you know the early summer. I mean, we're still zeroing in on a date, but it's not going to be the day before Christmas either. Um, so we're trying to find us you know the smart time to ship it. But we're we, we're not to a point where uh, you're not going to see a date on Amazon that's going to say December thirty first, twenty fourteen, or anything like that. Good. Yes. Um, Sorry. Uh, we look at this relationship as something long-term. Uh, first of all, it has to do with Pillars of Eternity, and uh, we, we are not sure where the relationship is going, but we have a good feeling so far. Yeah, I, I think to think about is, again, you know, I, all independent developers right now are looking kind of find their way in this kind of new world of, of Steam and tablets and free-to-play and all the crazy stuff that's out there. Uh, and a lot of us, you know, I think increasingly look at, you know, is there money in making the the 150 million dollar AAA console game and and how do you do that with a studio and not you know kill yourself uh, you know and so a lot of us like what are the other options out there and a lot of it is you know with the interest that everyone's had with Pillars of Eternity like let's keep on talking to people like Paradox and seeing how we can work together in in kind of the space of games that we love to make and we love to play. Yeah, I'll repeat the question so we have it for the camera as well. Uh, are we planning to do, are you planning to do any DLCs or expansions for projects, uh, Pillars of Eternity, sorry. Uh, I still that do all the time. I still call Project of Eternity. It was so 
in my head. Um, so we've already promised an expansion. Uh, so that was actually a part of our uh, Kickstarter campaign that, that we would actually ourselves fund an expansion pack. And so we're definitely going to be doing that. Um, a lot of it at that point is just, I mean, honestly, is just to see the reception and see how that goes and how the ex how it goes. And it's really kind of figuring out on a on a day to day basis, really kind of where is that world and where you know what people are comfortable with. You know, sometimes DLC is a is a four letter word and not a three letter word. And so um, or three letter acronym, I guess, is a better way of saying it. And uh, and so we uh, and and so a lot of it is just trying to figure it out as we go. Uh, another thing with the working together with Obsidian is that <clears throat> we like when, when developers are willing to go crazy on things. And when I played South Park The Stick of Truth, I laughed at the game for the first time in 20 years. Last time was probably Monkey Island back in the 90s. So if you haven't played it, go and buy it now. Any more questions? <laughs> yes? Yes, why did you want to work with Paradox? In short. In short. Uh, there are a bunch of crazy Swedes. No, no I, <laughs> more, more seriously, I, you know, I, I, I think that, uh, you know, ultimately we're a developer, you know, and, and, in, and some of you know my background and some of you don't. Um, I worked at a publisher, I worked at Interplay for 12 years from 1991 until 2003. And so I, I wouldn't say we're uniquely as a developer, um, familiar or intimately, uh, we intimately understand all the aspects of publishing uh, or getting a game to market, uh, but we probably know quite a bit. And you know, there's certain things, we're, we're awesome at making games. Uh, we, that's what we love to do, that's what we think about every day is making games. Um, and there's absolutely parts of getting games out there uh, that we would have to staff up. And a lot of how, kind of the math that come tells, unfortunately I, I, I design still a little bit here and there when they let me dabble, but a lot of it is I'm the numbers guy. And so a lot of it is, okay, if we have to take money from this, from, from to, to set up a, a department to do kind of publishing stuff, that takes it away from the game. And so we felt it was a great way to kind of partner with Paradox to do that. Now, when did it, that all start? I don't know, that's a good question. Um, I don't even know what, I, I mean, I, 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 I'm trying to think in my head. I think it's like, you know, we've known the guys for a long time. Time. I've known Johan over there uh, for a long time. And so I think it was just a conversation that came about as we were thinking about how were we going to publish this and still make Eternity the best game that we could. Yeah, we started, I think, talking one and a half years ago. And I, I know Chris as well. Yes. We've uh, talked at a few events uh, at the same time. You can, otherwise you'll just uh, grab us by the arm and ask us questions at the bar later on. One more, yeah. You know, how do we know is one person going to buy it after, you know, we fulfill our Kickstarter or do our 20 million? I mean, ultimately is really kind of the question. What, what's the, what is the market or what is the, you know, what do people, what do we feel uh, is sort of how we're going to do as sort of a product outside of being Kickstarter? Um, yeah, we don't know. I, I mean, that's I, you know, I, I, that's probably a little too honest in a lot of ways. But but I, I think that you know, when I look back and I go, because uh, you know, we look at things like you do. I mean, how many people downloaded the Baldur's Gate um, Enhanced Edition? You know, a lot of people downloaded that. Um, and yeah, I'm probably more intimately knowledgeable with some of the numbers and things like that because I can call people up. But we feel pretty good. I mean, we feel pretty good. We know it's a game we would buy, you know, and I know there's, it's not every Kickstarter I put money, I, we put into a lot of Kickstarters, but we don't put into every one. Uh, you know, so um, we're hopeful. I guess that's the best way to put it. We really hope that people who like, there's more people who like these, these games than, than gave, our, gave, it to, gave to our Kickstarter. We have a very simple philosophy at Paradox as well. We make the games that we want to play ourselves and then we hope that more people want to play them as well. So we're not typically making games for other people, we're mostly making games for ourselves. And when we see the concept of, first of all, Project Eternity, now Pillars of Eternity, it's exactly the type of game that we want to play when we read about. So that's how we both, how we scout games and how we make games. Yes? Uh, so you guys are doing sort of an in-house Mm -hmm. 
Question is, are we sharing ideas between Runemaster and uh, Pillars of Eternity? That hasn't happened yet, but uh, I'm not, I think it's a possibility to do that. And you can never have too many RPGs, right? No, <laughs> never. <Hey>. Never. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think it's the same thing. I, you know, I mean, I think ultimately, you know, I'm sure how me and Fred feels. We want also. It's important to us that development teams, development teams feel like the games are theirs. You know, so we're never going to say, oh, here's this awesome idea from here. You must go do it there. Um, but you know, it, you know, sh you know, we're openly gaming dorks in the end, and we love talking about games and playing games. And you know, so it's inevitable that you know we'll talk about things. I'm good. If you have any more questions, just come up to me and Fergus and ask them over at the bar, where we'll probably stand, if I know both of us correctly. And uh, thank you so much for coming. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. This is Fred from Paradox, and with me here I have Fergus from Obsidian. Hey, We're just uh, wrapping up the Paradox press conference at GDC 2014. So what do you think? Did we do a good job? I, I think we did a good job. I think we, we were careful about how much we drank, which was important. Because yeah. you know what happened start. those other times. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, but no, I think it was great to be able to talk to everybody about what was going on between us and our two companies, you know, and the fact that, you know, we're, we're going to be still making the game. We're absolutely making the game, and it's our game, and, and you're going to be supporting us by marketing and distributing and doing all the publisher stuff. Um, and the fact that, you know, we're just and we're just excited about working together. Absolutely. Here's to a great partnership. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.